Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lee Mission of 1977. It's Monday night, and you know what that means. It's time for the Raw Event Center, and here's the man that could give you the raw report of what happened on Monday nights, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans in 1977. Episode 1,250 of the show, March 5th, 2024, 1.31 p.m. That's right. Hello there. Tomorrow's my birthday. Yay, I'm excited. I'm going to be 47. Now, before um, before we get going, I'll talk about what happened on Raw last night. I want to give a shout-out for a few to a few good folks out there. And uh, one is to the both of us and the Sofa Boys. Uh, Garrison Newkirk, Jerome Latimer, the Putnam Brothers, Alex and Austin, A.K. Mr. Gar um, Mr. Garrison ninety six, Romy two one eight four, A. Pizzle ninety, and Peanut. I want to give a shout out to those gentlemen because they uh, plugged my show on their on their on the, the episode two hundred seventy of Both and the Sofas, guys. I appreciate it wholeheartedly. Thank you very much for the support and uh, appreciate the love you guys have been giving me and uh, including your. Uh, Crazy impression of me, Gary. I don't know what is up. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a button on my belly button. You know, I have a belly button, but I don't have a button on my belly. You know. I'm just sitting there with them, job at a hut for a game show host. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but do I do? Um, uh, hence, I do appreciate um, appreciate the, appreciate the love you guys have given me on the show. Check out both of the sofas. I always do. Uh, a little promo on their pressure luck was just hilarious. Gary's impression on me was hilarious. I had to admit, I'm like, oh boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a whole lot of fun. So you gotta love that. You gotta love it. Gary always has a sense of humor. So and the Bofa boys always have a great sense of humor about things. <clears throat> Although he's got to do a better impression, a uh, better job in doing impressions of me, man. You know what I mean? Study up on me, Gary. Study up on me. <laughs> oh yeah, I love you. Uh, also do uh, Greek and Shaw, um, especially Derek Greek, for inviting me to the Mario Kart racing last night. I did a little bit of that while watching Monday Night Raw. That was really super cool. And then, once again, I finished third place in one of the one, which is not that bad, really, you know. Because uh, some, some of these guys are good. You know, the Greek and Shaw crew, these guys are good. Lady Aaron's good. Fawn is good. <clears throat> Fawn's good. Everybody's good. And let me tell you something, man. i I tell you what, that's why I race by myself sometimes. Racing against human opponents is like, oh boy, we're in trouble now. <laughs> but anyways, uh, thank you for having me on. And to Isaac C. Video Database, he's, brother, you don't understand. The reason why I call it Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, I want to give it a fancy name. I can't just call it the Eric Lima Show. I can't call it TPL anymore or the People's Lima or WEML 77 TV anymore. The reason why I call it Eric Lima shenanigans of 1977. It it kind of documents all the all the stuff that I did since the day I was born, in a way. Um, I'll tell you why. In a way, I usually talk about some of my stuff in my past. You know, like the fun stuff. You know, I get nostalgic. You know, talk about something I grew up in the 80s and you know what some what uh, TV shows, cartoons, video games. Sometimes you know I give you top 10 lists, and it basically documents all the fun stuff that I had. You know that I that I've enjoyed since the day I was born, from but from from before my time on the internet to my current time on the internet, and it's you know basically, and I look at the internet nowadays as my virtual time machine. Basically, you, know, you can't go back in time physically. You can go in time, you know, you can go back on t in time online, so to speak, and you know, and see all you know all the fun stuff that you usually have. So. That's why. Now, I know you're trying, you're trying to say the video is 2020, I get it. I get it. Plus, some of the game shows I played were in the 70s. Uh, Joker's Wild was 77, 78. Um, you know, Tic-Tac-Doe was 78. Um, Bullseye was 79 with the pilot episode until it hit 1980. Um... High Rollers that will be playing on the next episode will be in the 80s, 87. Uh, Pressure Luck that I play on Thursdays would be 83. And so, yeah, so, like the game shows, yeah, it's it's on today's technology, but they were based back in the 70s and 80s. See, and that's hence the reason why Eric Lee Machine against of 1977. That's the reason why I named that Isaac C. Video Database. You have to understand. It is not, you know, yeah, you know, it, uh, 
I'm sorry if I if I if you misunderstood, but brother, don't worry about a thing. Cause if you like my videos, keep watching them, subscribe, keep enjoying my videos. I appreciate that wholeheartedly, seriously, you know. And um, you guys gotta understand, yeah, you know, I, I actually I'm not gonna go back in time and and uh, do on YouTube, but people think I'm like, the heck is that, you know? And don't want to do that. What's this YouTube thing, you know? Uh, it's hilarious. But however, however. So that's what I'm about. I, I wanted to give it a fancy name. And I figured, since I was born in 1977, I better, better call it Eric Lehman Shenanigans of 1977. Heard the word shenanigans, and I figured, hey, why not add it up? So that's why. So it's not it's not necessarily, you know, that's why, that's why I called it that. Even though it's today's technology, I figured. With the beauty of technology today, it's good to go back in time a little bit. So, you know, who knows? Who knows what the heck happens, okay? Um, hope you got, um, but uh, Isaac C. That video database, I hope you enjoy my videos regardless of what you think. All right, so uh, I figured, you know, have fun with it. That's why I do. So, anyways, let's talk about what happened on Raw last night. Uh, uh, there's something going on here. I'll pimple my belt. Uh, anyways, let's go, let's talk about, um, Let's talk about what happened on Monday Night Raw last night. And Cody Rose decided to respond the Rock, to the Rock's counter challenge. And he summons Seth Rollins to the ring. And Seth Rollins comes out and says along the line, called Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Diarrhea Dwayne. <laughs> I said, Diarrhea Dwayne? That sounds like a name for a garbage pail kids card, you know? <laughs> Diarrhea Dwayne. Hey, could have Beavis and Buddy go diarrhea, cha cha cha, diarrhea, cha cha cha. Anyways, anyways, they're both going to come to SmackDown to physically to do verbally face to face answer the Rock's counter challenge for Night One of WrestleMania. It um, if the match go if they accept it, it will be official. The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. If if Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins wins, the blood the bloodline will be banned from ringside for the matchup, and including the wise man himself, uh, Paul Heyman. But if the Rock and Roman Reigns wins, it's anything goes. Bloodline rules, basically. But then Gota went one on one with Dominic Mysterio in a non-title match, and. I mean, Ray Ripley does not want this match to happen, but Dominic Mysterio wants wants to really prove himself for Judgment Day. I get it. I understand that. But Dominic Mysterio is getting married in probably a few days or a few weeks or so. Dude, how are you going to get married when Gunter was making hamburger meat out of uh, Dominic Mysterio's chest? I mean, imagine. But imagine you're going to the wedding. Okay, you wear a tux. You got a white shirt underneath it and, and red seeping through it, like a little bit of blood. What happened to you, Dominic? I went in the ring against Gunta. Dominic, you should have studied his matches against Ilya Dragunov. And look at Ilya Dragunov's chest. I'm telling you, Dominic, was not a wise idea to step in the ring against the longest reign intercontinental champion in WWE history. But Gunta did win the matchup. And despite having, you know, J.D. McDonough at ringside, and, you know, so so did that. So, so there's that. And then uh, Damage Control. All four members and Adam Pierce goes, "What are you doing here?" And, and then, and he said, "We're just going to scout the competition. We're going to scout uh, the matchup between Kane and uh, Kane and Connor and Katana Chance versus Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark." And so, but uh, you know, the Kabuki Warriors have big fish to fry tonight on NXT as they are challenged by the team of Tatum Paxley and the NXT Women's Champ. Lyra Valkyria. So, so, um, and uh, then Shinsuke Nakamura interrupts uh, Adam Pierce and asks, "Will you about talk about the Intercontinental Title?" Yeah, come to my office and give me a good sales pitch for it. So, Kathy Kelly did interview Katana Chance and Kaden Carter, said they want to get back on top. It's WrestleMania season; they want to be the tag team champions once again. So they had that matchup, Chelsea Carter. And against uh no Chelsea Carter Chelsea Carter, Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Did I write Chelsea Carter down? No, you wrote, uh, I wrote Katana Chance and Carter versus Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. I think I'm Chelsea Green. That's why. Where is Chelsea Green? I haven't seen her. 
Anyways, uh, Damage Control was decided to block Pat McAfee and Michael Cole's uh, 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 view to the ring. You guys got monitors there to watch the dang matchup, gentlemen. Anyways, and so there. And you know, Michael Cole says, "I'm not a Bailey fan, but you know, uh, you know, but Bailey did not deserve what happened to her on this past Friday night on SmackDown." And they um, also Pat McAfee and Michael Cole. Gave a shout out to Sting, who uh, officially retired. It was a great classy to WWE to let them do that. And uh, even Pat McAfee says, I saw the match. It was crazy. It was insane, let me tell you. But it was a great matchup. Sailors, what a way to go out. So, anyways, Baszler and Stark pick up the victory. Uh, damage Control decided to confront them in the middle of the ring. And then all of a sudden, hey, about time we get our shot. Because how about next week? You got it. So, next week, the tag titles will be on the line as the Kabuki Warriors, if they retain the titles this um, tonight, Against the team of Tatum Paxley and Lyra Valkyria. Uh, they will defend it against Joey Stark and Shayna Baszler. So, so there's that. Uh, Judgment Day was consoling Dominic in the trainer's room. And then Ray Ripley was like, what do you think is going to happen? Ray Ripley was worried about Dom Dom. And I said, you know, hey, you know what? Here's the upside. If Dominic Mysterio's chest gets, gets turned to hamburger me, think about it. He gets married. Wedding night, his new bride can play nurse. If you know what I mean. There you go. <laughs> Talking about tending to your wounds. Hey, y'all. Hey, now. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm good with jokes today. I don't know what's up with me. But anyways. Andrade then greets Dominic before his uh, debut matchup. And uh, he says, hey, well, best of luck to you, you know, and everything else. And. And then Dominic goes, keep an eye on him. I think he may be the key. We might need him. So, I think, you know, Van Balor recruited J.D. McDonough. Now I think they want to expand with Andrade. Hmm, interesting, to say the least. Becky Lynch went one-on-one -on -one with Nia Jax. And, uh, and this was a heck of a matchup until Lev Morgan got involved, got, um, was attacked Nia Jax, got Becky Lynch disqualified, giving uh, Jax a victory. Lynch and, Mark, uh, uh, Lynch and Morgan were arguing, and then Nia Jax then attacks them. And Ricochet was talking to Pierce about, you know, about, uh, and shot the Intercontinental title. Anna Pierce says, I understand. I'll, I'll give you an announcement. And then, and then J.D. McDonough was, uh, and the rest of the judgment says, hey, J.D. McDonough wants a shot. Give me a sales pitch. I'm going to make an announcement. Lynch then confronts uh, uh, Liv Morgan afterwards, and and they decide to issue a challenge. Next week, that match will be happening once again. Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan will go one on one. Ray Ripley walks by the whole thing, sees Becky Lynch not in the very good mood, and starts laughing at her. Ah, the road to WrestleMania with the ladies has been a lot rougher um, on both sides, Raw and SmackDown. Adam Pearce announces the number one contender's gauntlet match next week. It will involve Ricochet versus Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bronson Reed versus J.D. McDonough and versus Chad Gable. Whoever wins the match will face Gunter at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. And uh, Andrade makes his return to, to the WWE in his first ring uh, um, in ring um, action back in the company. Makes his Raw debut against... Apollo Crews, a former Intercontinental Champion in his own right. Andrade is a former United States cha Champion. Heck of a match between those two. Andrade did pick up the victory. Jackie Redmond interviewed Sami Zayn about, about the announcement that Adam Pearce made. He says he's on Cloud 9. He's excited about it. He's looking forward to it. Ivar Valhalla interrupts Zayn and said, You know what? I'm going to make sure you don't make it to the gauntlet match next week. In the Harlem Castle, Ray and Italian Tegan Nock and Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree were all talking about being the women's tag team champion. It seems like Candice LeRae was being a little bit frustrated. And, you know, Maxine Dupree and Candice exchanged a little bit of words. And Indy Hotwell apologized. I think you see Indy Hotwell and Candice LeRae going back to their ways as they were in NXT. I would not be surprised. Um, Imperium versus Judgment Day action. Finn Balor and Damian Priest, the undisputed tag team champs. Representing Judgment Day takes takes on Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser Giovanni Vinci in a non-title matchup, but Balor and Priest ended up winning that matchup. Meanwhile, the first ever inductee to the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2024 is another none other than 
Paul Heyman, the wise man. The man that basically changed the face of professional wrestling in the in the 90s, in my personal opinion. I believe once once he decided to get bring ECW from an Eastern Championship to Extreme Championship Wrestling, I believe that changed everything about the W um, um, changed everything about professional wrestling, I think. In my personal opinion. Paul Heyman jump started that, you know. The whole thing. He jump started the attitude era in the WWE. He did you know, jump started basically jump started everything. Remember, he started as a manager of the Dangerous Alliance. A lot of people say who's gonna enter, uh, induct him in. Some say C um Punk, you know, normally it would be Brock Lesnar, but with all the allegations against Vince and Brock Lesnar's basically involvement in that would not be the case. You know, CM Punk, Tommy Dreamer. It has to be an ECW original. Tommy Dreamer, I'm thinking of, but he's working with Impact right now. Um, unless Impact, well, Impact did let Jordan Grace and Mickey James into the Women's Royal Rumble. Why not let Tommy Dreamer, you know, Impact and WWE should be working together, in my personal opinion. Anyways. So, and uh, Jackie Redmond interviewed uh, Drew McIntyre and, uh, Drew McIntyre says he's going to beat Jay Uso. He's going to, you know, he's talking about Seth. You know, Seth needs to stop focusing on the bloodline. What Drew McIntyre does not understand that the bloodline can take over any company, any brand he wants. If the if the if Roman Reigns and the bloodline have their way, there's going to be a little chance that Drew McIntyre will be a, a there's a chance that Drew McIntyre will be a serious target for one and two and two. A member of the bloodline could capture the world heavyweight title. So if I were Drew McIntyre. Let Seth Rollins do his thing and clear the bloodline out of the way so that way Seth Rollins can focus on defending his title. So that's a major thing. And plus, I think he's, you know, and plus Drew McIntyre, I think the bloodline's giving you an advantage. Trust me, you're a hypocrite there, Drew McIntyre, you get goomball, you goober. Anyways. Anyways, uh, then Ray Ripley uh, walked by Damage Control as they were laughing and he, she looks at Eo to stay out of my territory, and Eo and Rhea. I think if if, if uh, Damage Control splits up during the draft, and you know people coming over, uh, any of them come over to Raw, there's a pretty good chance that Eo and Rhea Ripley could lock up. Mm. So, uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy Zayn went one on one with Ivar. Heck of a matchup, but Sammy Zayn ended up picking up the victory. And then Bronson Reed, after the matchup, attacked Sami Zayn. Kathy Kelly interviewed Gunter, congratulating him on the victory over um, Dominic Mysterio, and he and he says to continue. He wants to continue his dominance of the Intercontinental Title. Chad Gable con, uh, confronts Gunter, saying, "Listen, I want my revenge for what you did to my daughter and all that by making her cry after you beat me. I'm getting that title one way or the other." Jay Uso uh, was about to get ready for his matchup. Addresses Drew McIntyre and. Says yeet and all that, and we're ready to go. Meanwhile, our troop DOI and the Miz, uh, joining Xavier Woods for uh, uh, some WB2K4, is hey, you know, Regeneration X, and they're doing this. And I'm going, if this if Regeneration X is a thing, I think we, I think it'll be the night after WrestleMania. That's when I think it's officially in full force. Jay Uso went one on one with Drew McIntyre, and uh. During the matchup, Sol Sokoa decides to get involved. But Cody Rhodes comes out, chases and and brawls with him and chases him out of the arena. Then Jimmy Uso shows up, distracts Jay, costing him the victory. Drew McIntyre wins the matchup. Seth Rollins, though, attacks Jimmy Uso. But then as Seth Rollins chases him out of the ring, Drew McIntyre claims more. Rollins says, you focus on me. Listen, the bloodline, as long as the bloodline is around, Drew, it's going to be hard. For you to even be a world heavyweight champion. So you better make good of an opportunity when you get it. So so that's all I got. That's all I got to say on episode 1250 of Eric Lehman Shenanigans of 1977. The name is because of... It's because of all the things I've caused since 1977. And uh, yes, we are in 2000... Actually, it's 2024, dude. <laughs> I meant to say it's Isaac... Um, 2024, you know, so, uh, it's tough, three months in already, so, thank you for tuning in, next episode will be High Rollers, folks, 
Uh, we do the $10,000 version, we do a commercial, and then we get the $25,000 version. So, until that next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Bow for Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.